Welcome listeners. Welcome back to the Great Journey podcast series. Uh, today, Sensei is going to be going over an episode with us called Good is the Enemy of the Best. Now, I always think of good as a good thing. So associating it with the word enemy is something new to me. Sensei, could you please explain what this means to us? Good is the enemy of the best? Sure. Um, so uh, being good at something is, uh, is a phrase we hear a lot. Being a good person or um, something is good for you. So the word good is... Um, it's, it's an important term that we use in life. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with being good or something being good for you and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, and, and I, I would say the best way to look at that is in terms of the exterior world, the world out there. Um, but in terms of your personal development, um, if you are become satisfied with just good, something being good, mm -hmm. then you're not reaching as high as you could possibly reach. Right. And uh, what's important to us is that you strive for excellence. Okay. And in striving for excellence, you want to strive to be the best, the best you can be, not just good, mm -hmm. but the best. Okay. And if you take on this attitude that you're striving for excellence and you want to be the best you can be, mm -hmm. and you want to be the best you can be at everything that you decide to do, then you're going to succeed in much greater ways than you would if you were just satisfied with being good. Right. Um, and it's not to say that you are going to um, be the best, the at, best everything. at everything. And you're not, this does not necessarily mean that you're competing against other people mm -hmm. to be the best, mm -hmm. but um, not that there's anything wrong with that either. There's a friendly competition is a great way to improve. Right. Um, and and um, we've just, we're, we're getting started with our competitive program right. after it's been dormant for about 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um, what I learned when I was a young karateka, mm -hmm that's a karate student okay by the way, um, was that people who chose to compete were uh, learned twice as fast as people who didn't okay. so I was a competitor and I earned my black belt in like two years and 11 months mm -hmm. and there were a lot of people that never got that far or it took them quite a bit longer to do that um, so that competitiveness where you're trying to be better than somebody else, that can be helpful as long as it's done correctly. Okay. You know, a uh, healthy way. Yeah, mm -hmm. a healthy way. Yeah. Because competition can get, get ugly. Yes. And, uh, you know, you really want to try to avoid that, that mindset. Right. So it's getting out of just being mediocre or doing the bare minimum. Like even, you know, some of my kids could be excellent in their schoolwork, but they're excellent all the time when I know that they could push themselves to be even better. Yes. So just because it's good yes. and you're getting an A doesn't mean that you can't add more to it to just broaden the, the strength of what they're putting into their work. Exactly. Okay. So if they're in uh, like sixth grade, for example, right. Um, they don't have to be satisfied with reading at a sixth grade level. Right. They could read at a ninth grade, tenth grade level. Right. That reminds me of a story of one of our students, yes. Reiner. Can you yes. tell me about him? Yes. And actually, Reiner's story begins with uh, Brandon's story. Brandon Alexander was one of our students, and uh, so a few years back, and he set a goal for himself to read a million words. Mm -hmm. And what he did was. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And when he entered the fifth grade, he was reading. That was the September of that year. He was reading at a fifth grade level. Okay. Five months later, in February of the following year, yeah. they tested him again. He was reading at a tenth grade level. That's incredible. Yeah, because he had set this goal that yeah. he wanted to read a million words. Right. And that so his grade, his comprehension level, his reading level just jumped. It just skyrocketed. Yeah. And then uh, one of our other students, Reiner Hooter, yes. who you're talking to, talking about, um, um, he remembered Brandon's story and he set a goal. Right. But Reiner was starting in second grade. He wasn't starting in fifth grade. Pretty incredible. He was yes. already in second grade. 
And sure enough, the same thing happened to him. His comprehension level jumped from second grade level all the way up to sixth grade level. Yep. And that's and, incredible too. And yeah. that happened in like five or six months. Uh -huh. And then the thing about Reiner is he got so excited about this challenge of reading a million words, he decided to do it do again. It two times yeah. in one year, right? Yeah. <laughs> two, so, two grades, I think, over he, second grade and third grade. Is yeah, that correct? Okay. Yeah. So the following summer, which was, I think that was the summer of 2020, was that this year? Yeah, or was that last year? Last year. Last year, 2019? Yes. Okay. He read something like 42 books. Oh, man. And his his comprehension level just, boom, jumped yeah. right up. I don't, don't remember what the details were on that one. but Right. That's I know pretty incredible. Yeah. So it just goes to show your own striving for excellence, like Brandon's, yep. also can inspire others. For it inspires others. Their yeah. drive for excellence as well. Yep. Okay, so how does this concept then apply to karate? Well, um, uh, first of all, it applies to karate or, or, or karate applies to it, depending on which okay. direction you want to look at the question. Right. Um, if you are going to defend yourself, mm -hmm. you are going to be in a battle where your life is in danger. Mm -hmm. And um, you, and that's that type of a battle, you have to give it all you've got and that's the energy that you bring towards a trying to be your best or striving to be your best mm -hmm. is that you're going to give it all you've got okay. because if you don't give it all you've got and you don't defeat this enemy you could end up dead right and um then and we don't like to think about those things but no. it's the truth of it being prepared for life unfortunately yes yeah Okay. So that's how it applies to karate is that it's, it's underlies everything that we do, this battle that we're about to go into mm -hmm. or could possibly go into, and we have to be prepared to go all out. Oh, wow. So we kind of went into how it can affect um, people in school in going over Reiner's yep. story, but can yep. you add more to that and how it would benefit people, students of all ages? Well, students of all ages can benefit by um, just by the fact that if you're going to take a class, mm -hmm. like um, uh, my wife is a good example. Um, Connie took a, uh, a music class, mm -hmm. a piano class mm -hmm. just last semester. Okay. Okay. And uh, she's 65 years old. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she wakes up with... Um, uh, student anxiety issues. I gotta be the best. Right. That's that's She's her got mindset. a driving spirit too. She has a yeah. driving spirit. Yes, and um, and and so what it does is it drives you on to accomplish more and to not just sit back on your laurels. Right. You know, I'm 71 years old, and people ask me, "Well, when are you going to retire?" You don't sit back at all. <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't. I. I this is in my blood now, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I ever will. Right. Um, and, you know, I don't think I would be happy sitting at home doing nothing anyway. Yeah, yep. I know people. My 91-year-old great-grandfather was still roofing uh -huh. with a patch over one eye and riding a motorcycle. It was probably really dangerous and not okay, but that's what he was doing until he was 91. He just did not want to stop. Uh -huh. And there's something to be said about that. A lot of people yeah. have thrived by continuing to work yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then so then lastly, how would this apply to parenting? Um, well, the way this would apply to parenting is that you uh, want to, first of all, instill this spirit in yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when your child sees you or feels this coming from you, mm -hmm. then they it will be instilled in them as well. Okay. So uh, this goes back to what we've said in the past, I think on a previous podcast, mm -hmm. that um, the best way that a parent can support their child is to become a student themselves. Right. And, or if they can't do that, then be a student in spirit. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, uh, if the parent is taking on this mindset that they want to strive for excellence in all that they do, mm -hmm. their child is going to feel that. Yeah. And uh, of course, it has to be a healthy thing. Right. You know, it can't be that you're going to drive yourself into the ground or you're going to, you know. Expect them to be an overachiever. Or right. Like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Has to be a he healthy balance in everything. There is. Yes. All right. Thank you, Sensei. This has been very enlightening and we look forward to seeing you all in our next episode. Have yeah. a great day. It's about time for my nap. Yep. Go take it. Okay.
he needs it. 